Hey, welcome to my art channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my real time process of painting this waterfall in less than 15 minutes. I recently did a 10 hour challenge and I'll link the video for you. And in it, I created 24 paintings in 10 hours. And as well as some of these little sneak peeks that I'm giving you, the waterfall came up as the favorite. I have actually turned this painting into an art print because I loved it so much and so did you and I will be sending it out as part of my happy mail to my Kofi members. In addition to that I will also be including some supervision dot cards and I'll link the video for you if you want to see some of the swatches from the other set. All this to say thank you so much for supporting. If you're interested in being a member or you're curious then I'll leave the link down below in the description. Every little helps and I'm excited to see you there. I want each print to be special and unique in their own right so I actually ended up painting on top of them to just add extra detail so that each one is completely and utterly unique. Just a reminder to Kofi members that you need to opt in to say that you want to get the happy mail and I'll leave the link for you down below. Altogether, minus the thinking time, this painting took 15 minutes to complete including the mixing thinking and procrastinating time it took half an hour. In terms of the materials, I am going to be using my Winsor & Newton gouache on my Sea White sketchbook and in terms of brushes, I go between using my Himimiya round brush and my De La Rowney graduate multi-purpose brush which I will link down below in the description for you. I then have palette paper for mixing as well as a paper towel to dab off excess water, a jar full of water and that is pretty much it. When I started this piece I was running low on time so I didn't actually do any sketches, I went in straight with the brush and you may have noticed that initially what I did was block out the general big shapes that I was seeing or the general big shapes that I wanted to capture and this was basically doing three lines across the page. For when I'm using gouache my very first layer has quite a bit of water and a little bit of paint and my aim of this first layer is to just get rid of the white of the paper. I quite often use this as an opportunity to play around with my colour mixing as well just to make sure that I start mixing the right types of colours. I know that I will cover this layer later on so sometimes some people you'll have seen will do like an underpainting almost of any color or the main color but for me I tried to use it as an opportunity to mix and to just get the general background colors that I'm seeing. So to start things off that's the really bright yellowish green foliage that's towards the left that's the slightly darker foliage that's on the right and then trying to figure out the perfect sky blue that I also want a little bit of in the water. Gouache can be a very forgiven medium and for me I work it by layering so that I know that this layer is just a question of me getting comfortable and mixing the right colours. Another benefit of getting rid of the white of the paper is that it then helps you assess values a bit better so I will actually have a better idea of whether my darks are actually dark enough whether my lights are actually light enough by comparing them to the colors that are adjacent to them or the colors that are near them as opposed to the startling overpowering white that can be the page <laughs> Once I've done that first layer that's primarily water with a little bit of paint, I can then start doing the next layer which will have less water and more paint and with each subsequent layer, so with each layer that I do after, it will have more and more and more paint until eventually it's just pretty much paint and next to no water and by that point it means that I'm just doing finishing touches and the reason for that is that if I start adding layers of paint that have quite a bit of water or more water than the layer underneath then I can actually start reactivating the wash which is something that I don't want to do. Getting the right consistency is something that really does take practice and I find varies from gouache to gouache but with time and with perseverance it does get a bit more intuitive knowing how much water you should add or how much paint you should add but as a general rule of thumb just think about it being thinner so basically less paint at the bottom and thicker so that's more paint towards the top i.e with each layer ensuring that each layer that you have done has dried before you do a new one if you're enjoying the video so far then don't forget to hit the like button thank you 
So in this new um, layer that I am doing, I am focusing on putting in the darkest values of the gouache. And the thing with gouache is that your darker colors tend to dry lighter and your lighter colors tend to dry darker. So don't think that you're doing something wrong or get frustrated if that's happening. It is just the nature of gouache. And quite often what I have to do when I'm painting is wait, see the paint dry and then reassess my color and either make it lighter or darker accordingly more often than not i actually have to make it darker <laughs> but you'll see in the sky so i really wanted it to be a lot lighter but once it dried it was darker so that's okay i just layer on top of it until i am happy I mixed a lot of greens for this piece and the key thing for that is to just try to get as much variety as possible. I don't want the greens to be all the same because I find that that can make the piece quite boring um, and even though I knew I was under a time crunch I was still very much aware of this. So how do you achieve that? How do you do that? So obviously mixing yellow and blue will give you a green. If you mix more yellow into it it will be a lighter green. If you mix more blue into it it will be a darker a green but taking things further sometimes if you want to make it a bit more um almost like olivey or if you want to mute it down you can add a red um depending on how muted you want you can either add like a bright red or sometimes i like adding either like a burnt umber or like a brownie red to it but the key thing is to just try and experiment with the different blues that you have with the different yellows that you have with the adding little different reds that you have as well until you get the kind of nice variation in your greens that you are looking for for these brighter kind of leaves and brighter spots that I'm doing I actually ended up mixing quite a bit of white into that super bright green to get those little like I guess pops of color or like to give the impression that the sun is shining towards the left hand side as opposed to the right and then I start adding little details so that's generally my process and you've seen this in real time minus the random points where I'm just hovering the brush and thinking about what to do next and you can see that you can actually get quite a lot done in a short period of time so if I were to say my process it would be starting with a very thin layer of paint to just get the colors down and to practice color mixing and I know that some of the colors will pop through but I don't like to add that much pressure to my Myself because I know that in theory if I hate all the colors I put down I can cover all of them in the next layer after that I like to go to my darkest of darks so trying to map down the shadows following that I go through to my mid-tone so this is like the middle ground colors you know the all the different varying greens that I was talking to you about and adding a bit of red to them and adding some darker blues to them to just like play around with them and then following that, I like to start adding my highlights. And it's because I tend to feel that my highlights bring the pieces together. They're the bits where I start adding the most detail. But by the nature of gouache, by the time that it dries completely, you'll notice that your colors will have changed slightly. The colors that you thought were perfectly dark will all of a sudden have gotten a bit lighter and the popping highlights that you thought were perfect will have gotten a bit darker. So like I said, I would then go back and start adding even more details. One of the things that I also try to work on, but I'm not always the best at, is trying to complete the piece by taking it stage by stage together. So in theory, usually I try not to add too many details to one part of the piece and while leaving the rest of it still behind and then adding detail by detail. So I try to kind of go through in this stepwise motion so that when I'm adding detail, I'm adding detail to everywhere. That isn't always possible and obviously that depends on <laughs> how I'm feeling and what I'm doing. But in general, that is what I am trying to do. The other thing is also that I try to do things that are further away first and then come forward. And this is helpful because it will then mean that when I'm adding the finishing touches and when I'm adding the details to the things that need to have the most amount of attention the things that are closest the things that usually are sharpest they will be the things that are closer to me so it's a lot easier to do that once I've already done the background as opposed to then trying to like paint around it so trust me it just makes it just makes more sense to start with things that are in a distance painting that 
and leaving the things that will require the most detail and that are closer to the foreground until later on. When I am using the same kind of color, I tend to mix on a pre-existing color that I had already. So what I mean by that is that, for example, in this painting, I had a lot of greens. Rather than starting with a fresh yellow each time and a fresh blue or starting with my primary green, every single time I actually like working on the green that I already have on the palette and changing that by adding more yellow or more red or whatever color I'm trying to do I think it runs the risk of making the colors muddy but I tend to find that actually just keeps my piece more cohesive it's also helping me with color mixing and understanding color mixing a bit more because I'm always working on a color that I've already mixed. It does mean for gouache, I should say that it can be hard to try and mix an exact color that I had mixed before. So if you were to need a significant amount of one specific color, for example, if you were doing like a block background, then I wouldn't do this technique because you will never go back to the color that you tried to mix before. Um, but if you're doing a painting like this where you want a bit of variation, but you still want it to be cohesive, then I think it's a lot of fun. One of my favorite colors and a color that I used heavily in this piece was Prussian blue. I just think it gives me such beautiful greens and I use it with mixing with the primary green that comes in the introductory gouache set but I also mix lemon yellow into it or primary yellow into it again to get really nice greens and then I mix my browns into that to get the more olivey greens that you see. One of the things that I love about gouache is that you can layer light colors on top of dark colors and that is exactly what I did for this waterfall. I also wanted the water to look quite organic and the way that I did that was by using a dry brush technique. So what I essentially do is put the white onto the brush with next to no water and then dab off any excess paint I don't want there to be a whole bunch and then do really quick brush strokes up and down and what that gives is this almost like wispy look to the water where it's not a complete block color but there are certain bits that are missing and because I had layered the gray rocks behind that already you can see that peeking through and then I add little bits of blue for kind of like a shadow effect and then I can start adding the details to the very front of the painting, which is what I'm doing now. So if you look at the bigger picture, you can see the details in the background with the trees and the little bit of light poking towards the left. And then in the middle, you have the waterfall, the rocks and the little bit of foliage on top of the waterfall. And coming even closer, you then have the foliage towards the left, which is one of my favorite areas, as well as the foliage towards the right, which I'm doing now. To be perfectly honest, I usually use one brush when I'm painting. I think just out of convenience, if I have a nice round brush that's thick enough that I can cover big areas but can come to a nice point, then I'm golden. But I have been experimenting with using more brushes and my general aim is to use the big one at the beginning when I'm blocking in shapes and I don't need to put in details and that's to resist the urge of putting in unnecessary details and also for the sake of time to just be able to cover big block areas. And then once I have done that, only towards the end do I then try to convert to a smaller brush, usually around the brush, to add those finer details that I was talking about earlier. But again, this completely depends on what I'm painting and how I'm feeling and time. <laughs> mentioned it to a few of you in the comments already but doing this challenge really felt like Parkinson's law because usually it would take me one hour to do a painting like this which I think is a good amount of time and then on editing I realized that if I cut out the bits where I'm literally just thinking and hovering over the painting this painting actually took less than 20 minutes to do <laughs> whereas if I were to do it on a live stream it would take me two hours but such is life if you are watching you are a real mvp and i really 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 appreciate you let me know that you're still watching by telling me how long on average it takes you to complete a, a finished painting or drawing in your preferred go-to size if you would like to see this painting as an art print up close and personal want some free dot cards to interact with other artists to support the channel and to have monthly art challenges then consider joining my Kofi, which i'll link down below for you if you want to catch my 10 hour challenge or my favorite playlist then check these out thank you so much for watching and i will see you next week bye